All right, so Florida, uh, we've also seen now, as this storm comes in, evacuations in, in orders in place. The NRA was instrumental in getting a 2015 law passed that says, hey, the concealed carry permit uh, requirements are waived during times of evacuation. Uh, this is a good thing for people. I think it is a great thing for people, and I'm so glad that this right is acknowledged, and I'm glad that this right was was fought for by the NRA, uh, because particularly during times of crisis, you see looters, you see people still, criminals still going to criminal. I mean, that's, you know, unfortunate fact about all of this, and it's incredibly sad that they would exploit something as tragic as a hurricane and, and storm victims and, and try to exploit these individuals at the time of, of highest vulnerability. But... It happens. I mean, we've seen this post-Katrina. We've seen this in numerous instances. It happens, and people need to make sure that they are safe, and they need to be able to protect themselves, because in so many grands of these storm-ravaged areas, first responders can't be there. Law enforcement can't be there, because they're part of a wider rescue effort, and that's incredibly important to acknowledge. So there, in some particular areas, you are your own first responder and your first line of defense. You know, we did see uh, in Texas, when Hurricane Harvey hit, many of the people we talked to said that one of the first piece of items, their prized possessions that they grabbed when they were evacuating was their firearm. And really for two reasons. One was personal protection when they're out in the chaos. Two was they didn't want looters going into their house and stealing their firearms either. No, that makes perfect sense. And and you would imagine that would be one of the things that looters would target. Um, I know that that's something that they were doing in and around Houston. They were trying to target various gun stores. Of course, many FFLs uh, were too smart for those individuals. But um, in places like Florida, et cetera, again, going back to storm-ravaged areas, yes, people want to be able to make sure that their, that their possessions are protected, particularly if it's firearms, ammunition, et cetera. They have every right to do that. The, the, the presence of a storm doesn't negate someone's Second Amendment right. The presence of an emergency doesn't negate someone's Second Amendment right. It doesn't mean that, oh, well, goodness, I guess you're not going to be able to protect yourself. Therefore, we're going to need to disarm you or somehow put excessive regulations on your Second Amendment right to bear arms. All right. So this tees up our next story about the U.S. Virgin Islands. And, and so I'm going to put mm -hmm. up the governor's order here and we'll take a look at exactly what it says. This is the governor. He, he literally says the adjunct general is authorized and directed to seize arms, ammunition, explosives, incendiary material, and any other property that may be required by the military forces for the performance of this emergency mission. Seize arms and ammunition, okay? So the order is written very clearly. The governor went on with Tucker Carlson last night on Fox News. Take a listen to what he had to say about that order. Let's assume that, that some circumstances came up that the National Guard had needed some munition and was not within their armory. If that munition was available in any retail store, the National Guard, the Adjutant General, would not have to go through the procurement process of the government to purchase it. She could go in there and buy that right off the rack because she's doing or he's doing what is required to retrofit the National Guard. But this is not about this is not about seizing anybody's personal property. Well, bottom line, I just well, want to be clear. Well, You're not taking anyone's let, guns away. Is that just... Let, just, let me be I, very clear. Let me be yes. crystal clear. Yes. I have no authority under the Virgin Islands law, Revised Organic Act, as written and passed by the Congress, nor yeah. the U.S. Constitution, to seize weapons from anyone and seize Good. them via the military. All right. If he's got no authority, then why do you write in your order, they have the authority to seize firearms. Then he goes on Tucker and calls it a procurement process, talking about stores. Yeah, that's not what was in the order. <laughs> that's not you. That It said seize. Seize is really different from procurement. Maybe not to the New York Times editorial staff, but to the rest of Thinking America. It's incredibly, those are two different terms. Seize and procurement are incredibly different. Um, he was very, he was really dancing around that question on Tucker's program last night. But the order is as it is stated. But furthermore, uh, this was back in, this is post-Katrina uh, in 2007 when this took place, when the NRA was fighting and, and, and they, they were backing a David Vitter-sponsored bill. This was uh, on a House, uh, Department of Homeland Security, excuse me, Department of Homeland Security Appropriation. Act. And on that, a Republican from Louisiana, David Vitter, included an amendment. It was a simple one-sentence amendment that stated that during times of, you know, emergency, you're not going to be deprived of your right to bear arms, etc. And the NRA had backed that amendment, and that was something that has passed, and that's something that is into law. So during times of crisis, during a national emergency, the federal government cannot use that emergency as a basis for disarming law-abiding Americans. And that's, that's the law. 
Yeah. I don't care if you're a politician in the United States mainland or you're in the U.S. Virgin Islands. People are sick of elected officials talking out of both sides of their mouth. When you write seize in an order and then call it a procurement process and say you're not going to seize uh, on TV. Yeah, that's entirely different. And, I, and Green, I understand what he was saying, and I thought his terminology was quite bizarre because he was saying, well, you know, because we can't just go and he actually, did he say the phrase off the rack? Because I'm pretty sure that that's what it off sounded like rack. he said. Yeah, yeah. Like you're just going to go, yeah, you're just going to go, get, get it off the rack. Uh, so he was he was trying to argue that because, I guess, somehow uh, their ability to purchase firearms through governmental means and processes would be limited due to the storm, that that somehow justified the right. He didn't actually get to that part, but he argued as if the suggestion was that that somehow justified the right of them being able to make up whatever they lacked in munitions by seizing it, according to the order, from law-abiding citizens. And that's not how that works. Yeah. Nothing justifies that. That is not how that works either. So, no, no, no that's a bad argument no. and illegal. It certainly is. Dana Lash, as always, great to talk to you. We'll see you tomorrow.